Hello and welcome, my guys, to <laughs> another Total Soccer Show Cooligans crossover episode. Yeah. My name is Daryl Grove. To my left is Taylor Rockwell. Please say hello. Hello. To my straight in front is Christian Falenko. Hello. Hello. To my right, Alexis Guerreros, spelled not with a C. Hello. Yeah, that's right. Hello and welcome, my guys. <laughs> <laughs> At what point in the intro did you decide to add my guys? Right before. Okay, that's what it felt, After the it word felt like. You, you're like, I, I did not practice the my guys. Oh, and am I getting you, critiqued already? No, it was just, it was, I enjoyed it. It, oh, was, also, it was good. I've just good. not heard you do it before. It's also right. my guy. There's no S. Oh, excuse me. It's okay. <laughs> excuse but, me. But do you, it's do you work for WBIX? Uh, yes, you are now getting critiqued. Yeah, I am. All right, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to move us along. We are here <laughs> in DC. Today, we played and Audi another Field. Thing. We played Audi Field. We did. We did. That's right. We, we did. played yeah. very weird. Field. Not soccer. Not in the way Wayne Rooney does. They don't, need, exactly. to, they don't need to know that. They don't yeah. need to know that. <laughs> they were like, Alexis definitely did not play. <laughs> <laughs> but we did a live show for the Screaming Eagles in one of the Heineken suites at Audi Field. I got all the sponsorships, right? Nice. Not bad. I'm going to say it went well. I'm going to give us. I'm going to give us thumbs up. Oh, look at that! <laughs> yeah, I mean, gr- great tactical analysis of the yeah. show. <laughs> Tough <laughs> critic, this guy, this Daryl guy. You're on the show. Two thumbs up, my friend. Uh, that was that was the most moving part show I think we've done, maybe outside of Atlanta. Yeah. So I think that's that's pretty impressive, given how many people were up and down and all around, and, comings and goings, yeah. and certain people had certain schedules they had to stick to. <laughs> certain people yeah. did. Yeah. <laughs> certain uh, head coaches. Also, <laughs> not saying who they can. <laughs> uh, but it was uh, an incredible thing. Uh, it was an honor to not only do that, but to do that with you guys. Uh, it was, was the best. It was incredible. I, you yeah. know what? I it wasn't honor for you to do it with us. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize how much I missed uh, being on the road with you guys. You guys yeah. are a blast. Yeah. And here we are in our mosquito-filled Airbnb. That's right. DC. Getting yeah. bit up. Okay. Indoor mosquitoes. We, did not know they were We played this super fun summer game of mosquitoes or bedbugs today. <laughs> and we're really crossing fingers for mosquitoes. <laughs> What's on my knees? <laughs> America's least popular yeah, new yeah, game. Yeah. <laughs> so here's how this is going to go down. We asked for questions on Twitter. We got many questions on Twitter. It's going to be two parts, right? So the first part, I believe, is Total Soccer Show because I spoke first. Yeah. Yes. Um, so it's Total Soccer Show episode for part two. You got to go subscribe to the Cooligans and listen to part two and over I, there. Look, guys, I know it's a chore, right? Yeah. I know you don't want to do it. We're speaking specifically to the fans who've left us reviews that say you don't want to do it. <laughs> we get it. You love Total Soccer Show. They're all smart, okay? <laughs> but every once in a while, you need a cheeseburger. You can't have a steak for every meal, okay? <laughs> Welcome to the Cooligans, folks. There will be some food questions. <laughs> yeah, of course. I'm pretty will. sure. Are you ready for the first question? Let's do it. It's from Ira Jersey. Oh, hey. we all met in Chicago, right? And, Ira. and Ira actually came to our studio to yeah. watch uh, of one, course, of, one yeah. of our shows. Yeah, so great guy. Ira's all right. Great. So I'm glad Ira is the first question. Cool. Le- Le- League One fun, yeah. League One fun is Ira's podcast. Great, uh, great, uh, great selection of ties that man has. and suspenders. <laughs> he has oh, great. soccer suspenders. Dude's got Ooh. soccer suspenders. Did not know that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, like Terry Crews. Like he's got too many yellows. <laughs> Suspend. Are right, you ready for Iris' question? I guess can I, can I boo Alexis people, first, or should we just yes, go to the question? Please, no, please do. We boo. Should, <laughs> we should just also. Uh, I boo my guy. Make sure, <laughs> make sure we tell everybody. It is after our show, and it is uh, quite late, so this is why there's going to be terrible drunken jokes from yeah. uh, Alexis. Well, no, that, oh, from just Alexis. Yeah. <laughs> You're definitely going to hear. Sober in this room, right? You're going to hear some puns you don't want to hear, and here's I'm going to say some puns I don't want to. I boo say. again. All right, here's Iris' question. All right. Go for it. If TSS was a football slash soccer team, which would it be? If the Cooligans were a team, who would they be? Here's a, I think we should answer for each other. All right. right? No, so, like, I, so Taylor should say I, I who the Cooligans in. would be. I thought about this because we, we talked about this a little bit right before we started recording. And I, and I like initially went through like, like, uh, like who are the big teams? And, and really, I mean this in like the most complimentary way. You guys are FC St. Pauli. That's my answer. So okay. it's like, it's it's like the It's like the... Left wing, I'm going to say that one. Left wing, but like the kind of punk rock German club, second division, but like, like occasionally come up, but do it their own way. Punch and above like, their weight, sometimes. and like, yeah, they've and like you know they have the sausage train. They do. So I feel like you. I feel like Alexis could enjoy some sausage. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I would say like out, like outspoken, but get shit done. That's what I'm going to say. And All it's right. a total soccer show, so now we're going to have to beep that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> get Cooligans uh, done. Yeah. yeah. All right. So Cooligans, who are we? I was gonna. I was gonna. Say Thailand women's team. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys gave us a nice thing. <laughs> uh, because we're heroic? Because huh? we set you up for a win? <laughs> yeah. Um, that's a good point. You held us the longest without a goal, but then we stormed true. Um, I, mean, I mean, to me, I'll, I'll, maybe you have a different opinion. I, I, I'm going to have to say Manchester City. 
Right. Oh, sweet lord. Because of all that money? Because of all that oil money? Because <laughs> that oil money. No, but because it, it's a, a, a well oiled machine on the outside. <laughs> on the and, outside. On the oh, outside. Shit. But when you get to the nuts and bolts, like when you, you know, when like everything looks great, but when you actually talk to Pep, you're like, oh, this guy's a maniac, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like he's really into this. Yeah. <laughs> Which one is the maniac? <laughs> oh, oh, it's a combination. You okay. two together are a Pep no, yeah, You guys form. <laughs> form like Voltron. To one maniac. And the good thing is, if we have a cast off assistant coach, we can just send him to coach your guys' team. That's right. <laughs> Welcome to New York City. It's not a bad place to go as a castaway. You ready for the second question? Yeah. Yep. Question number two is from Aaron Motes. Aaron asks If MLS decided to adjust its calendar, would the South American style calendar, the what, Apertura, Clausera, yeah. um, work better than the European one, which is what, play from the summer through the winter till the spring? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I think I think so too. I'm done. That's All it. All right, um, I'm going to add to Aaron's question. If so, why? Oh, okay, uh, Alexis, over to you. Uh, which one's better, the uh, South American or the European? Yeah, for MLS, I, w- I would rather have the like the German or the Finnish style, which is kind of like the Apertura and Clausura, but you're not considered a champion for each. You know okay. what I mean? Yeah. Like you don't win it. You, so you want win. like the break. Yeah, just yeah the I want yeah, the long break. break, but I don't you want, want the winter two break. champions. That's just too much. There's too many people with trophies. You got too many stars above your crest. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, that's what I'd rather have. I, I think we need the break if we're ever going to switch to a Euro, uh, European or uh, uh, winter calendar. You definitely need the break just because, you know, Minnesota and uh, <laughs> New England, you know, Siberia, basically. But um, I don't want. You know, not everyone could be a champion. Oh, I won two weeks in a row. I'm a champion. You know, there's so many championships. Yeah, I think for uh, American soccer fans or just American fans of sports, it would be too confusing of like having this this winter winner and then a summer winner and stuff, yeah. uh, stuff like that. Uh, but we do desperately need that break. And I honestly, I always think about you know, remember when we were uh, at the press conference w- for with Sanu Galati, and he was saying like, "We've we've tried all of this. Mm-hmm. How are you going to ask somebody to play uh, in Minnesota in, in in February?" It's like, I honestly think the 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 season as should... though they don't play in March. I know, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> but I do think the season should go uh, longer into like into December. Oh, really? You know what I mean? Like. Because of global warming, it's hot. It's yeah, pretty, it's pretty warm. It doesn't long... get cold till like mid January anymore. <laughs> yeah, so the, the break should be late. The, the the break should be in January and February to some degree, and and uh, but go into December. I right, so best solution is we abandon any sort of uh, green plan and we just we we make the environment worse, and then <laughs> oh, we sure. can extend the MLS season <laughs> as long as we like. Yeah, right? dude. The more cows fart, the more likely it is that we'll have a break between January, January yeah. and February. So if you want, if you want a different MLS. Calendar, Canada, stop recycling. But if, if people are new, if people are new to our show, I think the other reason why I say South America, though, or why I'm inclined to do South America, I realized is because I think that's also how you and I have discussed doing pro rel in the past of doing like oh, one yeah. season of you play your like regional area and all the professional teams in that region, and the second season you're playing like if you qualify for it at the higher level, or that's when you do like MLS, USL, whatever. Mm-hmm. So I think that's what I go to. That's the easiest way to do pro rel in my mind. So that's I think that's why I like the idea of the two season thing. But you're right, you couldn't have the two champions, but then my fear would be that, like, but would Americans be okay with, like, all right, we're taking a three-month break now. We'll be back for the rest of the season in a while. Don't get distracted. Exactly. No flipping. Yeah. No flipping. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, try not to start any new shows on Netflix. <laughs> like, yeah. like, this, this, but see, okay, to that point, like, Netflix, if you're, like, like, actually, I think Amazon is the worst offender for this one. Like, you finish a show... And then it goes to the next episode, and they still give you, like, the three-minute in case you missed recap. And it's like, that's literally for the episode that I just, like, if I'm binge-watching, I finished three seconds ago, and you're giving me an episode recap. Right. So if they think we need that, what would they need for, like, the three-month gap oh, between seasons? Previously on. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> on Major League Soccer. <laughs> yeah. Here's where we left you. <laughs> Maria. <laughs> See, nah, man. Nah, man. It's a telenovela? Pero por qué, Maria? Oh, now I would watch. Yeah. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> Yo, Gio Savarese, put your shirt. All right, next question. This is question He's number... definitely the villain, right? 100%. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Question number three is from Mars Brownson. Uh, Mars says, you give love to USL. How about WPSL? Their playoffs are now. So, love to WPSL? WPSL, which is, is the equivalent of... Uh, the second division. Second division for the... For, uh, for women's soccer. And WSL. Yeah. And women's soccer. Um, there's no pro rel, though. Oh, <laughs> what? Uh, See, and this is the problem with American <laughs> soccer. <laughs> oh, what are these women scared? <laughs> Meanwhile, so we, no we, one's doing it. I think we have to go and say we don't know a lot about the WPSL, right? So, we'll just agree with Mars and say, yeah, love to WPSL. Um, I hope the playoffs are great. 
Sure. I, I got to start showing love to the USL. I barely watch yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. So I got to start there. <laughs> you are welcome to a Richmond Kickers game anytime. All right, cool, man. Yeah. Peter, Peter asks, why isn't the Total Soccer Show verified on Twitter? I mean, Alexis was able to dot, dot, dot. <laughs> well, that's because they threaten executives, okay? And if you want to be verified on Twitter, all you have to do is go to their office and just start knocking on some doors. Okay? <laughs> I, 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 genu- I genuinely don't. Have we tried? I genuinely don't even know how it happens. Back in the day, I submitted a verification okay. Request, but I don't think we had the clout then. Oh, because that was that was. I'm not sure we do now. That was back when you still had to be like connected to some sort of like legitimate quote unquote media. So it's like if you'd written an article for ESPN, verified. Yes, actually, maybe Ryan for the Athletic may be enough to get us verified. It gets gets you verified. Totally. (laughs) I've actually been thinking about, especially when uh, he got. Well, we were trying to get verified for a while. And I was verified because I had first, right? Yeah, because I had I did a play. New check for Lanker. I was I was I, did, I had done a play that got a lot of uh, press, and I just uh, I you just did a play. I did a play. Yeah, I knew he was, years he ago, was yeah. incredible in it. Yeah. yeah, and when after after that happened, uh, well, while it was happening, we did a lot of press. So uh, I sent uh, Twitter all the articles and all the interviews that ah. I did that were written articles. That, that's, I think that's the the easier thing for them to like. Grasp that you're a, a person of interest, or, or in someone the wrote about you. Because someone wrote about yeah. me. That's all. That's all it sort of took. Uh, and I have been thinking, I'm like, why aren't they verified? Like they. they well, done... you were verified, then the podcast became verified, and I still wasn't. It wasn't yeah. until I became a host of HQ. Yeah, that's right. Ah. That was the moment I became verified. So, Cooligans was verified before Alexis. Yeah. Oh. I even I even said to one of the I, that feels like the right order to be fair. Chris, <laughs> yeah. Christian, then the podcast. <laughs> And that Alexis. Yeah. I will say this. If I were to write that out as a script, it probably should go the same way. Yeah. <laughs> but I remember when I, uh, I I spoke to someone who worked at Twitter, I was like, dude, my podcast, I'm one of the hosts of the podcast. How can the podcast be verified and not me? And he's like, dude, I don't know what to tell you, but I can't I can't get you passed. <laughs> so I was just like, I guess I'll it's never. A real conversation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I guess I'll just never, because he submitted me. And he was like, nah, man, you got denied again. And they won't ever tell you Did why. You go with Carreras or Guerrero? Yeah, that's a good point. Well, Carreras much more popular than I am. Much more. He was on TV. Yeah, that guy. That guy I like, deserves I like to be that on guy. TV. I gotta be honest. Sex appeal funny, on that right? guy. He seems yeah. friendly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's well, I, I funny, think... right? Question mark. <laughs> I'm Even gonna, that guy, you're not sure. I'll say this. I'll say this on the air. We're we're gonna do our best to try to help you guys get verified. Oh yeah, verified. Yeah. Anything that we can do to try to help, I, I'm we're gonna. But I, try. I genuinely don't know. Like, what does it take? What do you have to do? I've never felt it used to older <laughs> than I feel so right now. Being like, to, what's the check mark <laughs> yeah, for? Yeah, like, how's it so, help? <laughs> like you had uh, s- submitted yourself with they, they were they had open uh, ver- like verification yeah, sort of requests so you could, so you could yeah. submit yourself. Uh, and now they stopped doing that because uh, too many like alt right people were like saying bad stuff. Right, so they uh, so they took that away. Cause... I didn't do that, by the way. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Alexis did though. <laughs> <laughs> so um, now now they like I I can't honestly I don't even understand exactly how we got verified because we had tried they kept getting denied and then when we got verified it was I I was we didn't know it was going to happen. I was more impressed with Cooligans getting verified than when I finally got verified because when that email came through I was like oh my god did you see this why yeah. you know we had no idea. I th- I th- my guess. To why we got verified is probably because when we did the interviews at the coaches convention and we started interviewing Jermaine Jones, Ali Krieger, I think that those were of of high note that people were, I think somebody must have been aware of what was going on. You think someone on Twitter was listening to those episodes? Well, it is. It's no, it was verified by human. The verification is vetted by oh, human. Yeah. So somebody must have been inspired to be like, yeah, okay, these guys are real. Look it up. See that we've requested verification previously and just submitted us. All yeah. right. I definitely don't want to talk about this and anymore. To, and to bring, but to bring it back to global warming for a second, the blue check means that when the Earth like bursts into flame, the people with blue checks get put on the spaceships and sent to Mars. <laughs> yeah, dude. You all get to survive while yeah. us plebeians without the check marks are, are yeah. doomed to live in the boiling oh, sea. You, you live in the verified dome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the verified biodome. Just on the outside scratching. <laughs> it's like, it's next like, question. It's don't. like that movie with, uh, what's his name, Matt Damon, where he's like learning how to plant a potato. The Martian. Like, Martian. Yeah, that's it. I'm I sorry. Was, I was really curious which one we were going to go with because I was like, please be biodome. Please be yeah. biodome. I really thought we were going to get a biodome like shot movie. in there. <laughs> <laughs> the ne- documentary. Next question is from Stephen Brandt, fellow podcaster. What is the gulliest thing about Wolverhampton Wanderers? Oh, the fact that they're just breaking every law to sign these players. <laughs> Hell yeah. There's nothing better than just letting an agent run the team. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. I would say the crest. 
Yeah. Okay. I have a, yeah, I'm a more biased opinion. I know that's your that's your club. <laughs> yeah, I would say the Luchador mask from uh, Raul Jimenez. Right? Oh yeah, I love that. Ooh, not a good answer to this. Yeah. yeah. All right. Tyler, you going? Now maybe I, I may be misunderstanding what Gully is like definitively. So I, you know, you all feel free to correct. But I feel like like I think of you all as being you know like the the or like originators of Gully, and I think of both of you as not necessarily like aggressive or like you know intimidating but i do i do get the vibe that like you know christian could throw down alexis could throw down and i think that's nuno to me because nuno is like he's so quiet and like whispery and he's always very calm and very very like like sedate but there's always that feeling of like but you're about to like like he's like white knuckling a bottle while he's being very calm and i feel like at any moment (laughs) he just like smash the champagne with it he's burst a champagne flute in his hand you guys also have a a similar beer you and nuno kind of have a similar beer we we have we've actually you go gray yeah i i I don't mean to be like self-indulgent we've had that conversation about like i've asked daryl like do i look like nuno to you because i think it's (laughs) it's like the tired eyes combined with the big beard and maybe the receding hairline that's the main (laughs) reason we're friends that's it it's the only reason like one day this team i like who are garbage now yeah. They're going to be good. They're going to get a guy uh-huh. I like. You look like him, I think. Let's go also, for it. shouts to a guy whose last name is just Holy Spirit, like the whole thing. <laughs> I will tell you, the gulliest thing about Wolverhampton Wanderers, if you've ever been there, is the city of Wolverhampton. It's pretty gully. <laughs> it's pretty gully. Yeah. yeah. In the way that you guys mean it. Nice. Yes. Oh, I didn't know that gully meant sad. That's good. Yeah. All right, cool. Cool, cool, cool. It means rainy. So. <laughs> hey, this is Daryl and Taylor just cutting in. Getting rid of those cooligans. Kicking them out. For, you know, 10 minutes yeah. or so, so that we can do a listener question and a couple of ads. Mm-hmm. It is much quieter in here without the cooligans, isn't it? <laughs> it, it is. I mean, we're in a different space. Yeah. But yes. Uh, it, is, <laughs> it is quieter in our, in our office than it was in our, in our living room of our Airbnb. Yes. And it, it is take, worth taking the time to say, mm-hmm. we poke fun at the cooligans a lot, almost as much as Quincy Miracle poked me in the ribs. Mm-hmm. Um, but we do enjoy working with them, right? I've, I just realized that when we record the show, sometimes we take some funny shots at them. Mm-hmm. But we want to make clear that we like working with the crew. Yeah, I love getting to record with Christian. It's great. <laughs> it's great. It's one of my favorite things. That's an example of the type of thing I'm talking about. We actually love both of them, We right? do indeed. We yeah. also love today's sponsor, SeatGeek. Yes! Uh, SeatGeek uh, is our sponsor. As I said, did you know that almost half of all Major League Soccer fans are female? That's not just a fact. It's something we're celebrating. I did because I've done a sad read before. Uh, indeed, but also because when we went to the Screaming Eagles tailgate, I, yeah. it, was a, it was a lot of women there, a lot yes. of women supporters. And it is a good reminder that it's, it's not just dudes who are out there yelling and screaming <laughs> and setting off smoke bombs. Women just as capable of setting off smoke bombs. MLS logo it's not just dudes uh-huh. <laughs> i think that's a good logo um yeah and it's the summer of soccer and as we support the women on the field in france we or did supported, that and it worked yep uh seat geek and major league soccer are teaming up to showcase the female fans at home who've made this sport all that it is yeah they've really done a whole thing and to learn more about the collaboration and to see the female fans of mls showing their true colors check out we fan dot seatgeek.com because mm-hmm. of my weird accent i'm going to spell it out w-e-f-a-n dot s-e-a-t-g-w-e-k dot com we fan dot c-o-m c-o-m yes thanks for com d-o-t-c-o-m um, but if you wanted to use seatgeek for maybe other uh, avenues such as looking for tickets to different events yeah uh, you could do so to get say tickets to the mls all-star game well, uh, All right. wednesday july 31st 7 30 p.m versus atletico madrid uh tickets available uh starting from i believe 48 dollars thereabouts uh but many tickets available so you could still attend that game which we will hopefully be doing that's the plan right now yes at least. media credentials have been applied for we'll as we record this it's the deadline hopefully, hopefully we'll be hearing back some positive news soon Ideally. and we'll get to see Jao Felix in action Let's against so. all the stars all the stars all the stars are um, uh, but if you wanted to maybe look at uh, opportunities or events closer to right now uh, we're <laughs> going to be going to see how did this get made I believe uh, in the we very are. near future yeah, yeah. Uh, there are tickets available to that show here in Richmond we both love that podcast uh, I'm excited to see Jay- yeah. Jason Manzoukas' crazy eyes and we're, we're uh, Manzou- screaming we're Manzoukas for life right oh yes 100% 100% <laughs> uh, yes. does he have a fan group I, he should. Like Manzuki Sisters or something? It would be an insane fan group, and I'd be kind of afraid to be a part of it, <laughs> yeah. but also I would definitely want oh, to be a part of it. Fanzukis. Fanzukis. There yeah. we are. <laughs> there. See? Yeah, you, you figured it out. Yeah, so tickets available. How did this get made? You could get them uh, for the Richmond show. You could get MLS All Star tickets. Any other uh, concert, live event, comedy uh, event, theater, yeah. anything you wanted to attend, there are tickets available. They can be found on SeatGeek. And you said starting at $48 mm. for MLS All Star. What if I could tell you that it started at $38? What if you could? Because. 
Um, if you go uh, via SeatGeek and you enter the promo code TSS, that's TSS, you'll get $10 off of your first SeatGeek purchase. So don't be coming at me with that $48 stuff when I know it can be $38 with the TSS code. There it is. So want to get, once again, TSS is the code for $10 off your first SeatGeek purchase. Remember, folks, SeatGeek, a ticket for every fan. Aww. Thank you to SeatGeek for sponsoring today's episode. Daryl, I believe, as you've already previously indicated, we have a question to get we to do. answer. In. So there's a lot of Twitter questions, like fast, quick fire Twitter questions mm-hmm. on this show we're doing with the Cooligans. But we're taking the time to answer one listener question, and obviously many more in the future. Today's listener question is from Adam Ulrich. Mm-hmm. It's about the U.S. men's national team. And Adam asks, this is a common question. I think we've never answered this. This is a good time to do it. When preparing for the Fall Nations League and the friendly games, this is the U.S. in September, October, November, what criteria would you use to determine if a U.S. men's national team player should be called in or left with their club team? And Adam says, I'm thinking of situations like Josh Sargent, Tim Weyer, etc., who may be trying to integrate into a new team or maybe battling for playing time. Mm-hmm. And I'm kind of taking this to mean, essentially, should Josh Sargent and Tim Weyer be playing for Bremen and Lille mm-hmm. um, if they're going to get called up to the national team? Or is just like being on the fringes of those teams enough to get you called up with the national team? Um, I mean, yeah, I, I, but I think if we're going with like, what's the criteria? Like, I, I think my issue then is that it's like, is the idea that there's supposed to be a list of things that you have to consider for every single player? Because that's not really what I think I is what Greg Berhalter does, nor yeah. what I think he should do. It's not, it's not what anyone should do, no. right? Like, yeah, and imagine if this is us. I would not set like hard and fast rules and say, okay, Josh Sargent must play a minimum of mm-hmm. 70% of all minutes for Werder Bremen, or I'm not calling him in. Or you say that for all players, then you just set in arbitrary like rules that that you're then enforcing for no reason, yes. right? You should address each individual player's situation individually. Yeah. One size does not fit all. I mean, because if you're going... It does not, because if you're going by form and if Christian Pulisic has a rough start to Chelsea, to his Chelsea life, are we not going to call Christian Pulisic in? Right. We probably are. Right. So I think I think what it comes down to for me, I have three, like, general criteria that I think are... Oh, you do Im- have criteria. ...that are okay. important, but it's not, like, hard and hard and fast. Yeah. It's not like... Um, I think my, my new slogan uh, from this morning, uh, we went to, uh, like, a, a meeting here in Richmond yes. uh, to, like, you know, get some people on the, uh, the soccer team that we coach. Uh, I like the idea of... Uh, hard and fast rules make you live hard and fast. Like, it make your life hard and fast. It's not the easiest way to live, but my three kind of general a criteria. Good preparation for life. Yes, yeah. exactly. Uh, I would say, number one, the biggest thing that we've seen so far is a familiarity with the system or an ability to operate within Greg Berhalter's system. That's what I think I wouldn't mind seeing, as in, right now, we've seen Paul Ariola prove yeah. he can play that role. So you probably call Paul Ariola in. And then you maybe you bring in somebody else to compete with him to see if they too can perform that role. But that is a big part of what I think Berhalter's looking at right now. Will you take questions on this? Sure. So uh, th- this isn't necessarily what should Greg Berhalter mm-hmm. do. It's what do you think we should yeah. do, right? What's our opinion? Mm-hmm. Aren't we in danger of, if you're saying they need to be familiar with the system, you start closing it off to people who've never been in the squad before, and then suddenly that just being familiar with the system is enough to get you picked ahead of someone who might actually be better at soccer? No, because uh, as I said, number no, like the second part there was that okay. there's a second person called in who could challenge oh. him for that spot. So you want like one familiar, one unfamiliar? Well, I think it's more so like you don't want to have somebody who's come in and shown they can do what's been asked of them, they can perform their role, but then be like, yeah, but you don't really fit anymore, so no. Like I, I, I think you reward the people who've been there, and that's how you build the kind of core that you need right now, in yeah. my opinion. But then you continue to experiment, but then there are the players, I mean, as a as a Sad example, in my opinion, like Kellen Acosta comes in, maybe shows he doesn't have the fitness right now or doesn't have the ability to function in the system that Berhalter wants. And so he gets kind of pushed to the outside. Maybe there's an opportunity for him to come back in if his game changes, which yeah. is the secondary I, thing. I have no idea how he's doing for Colorado, honestly, yeah. so I can't, I can't speak to that. But this is where my, my second criteria comes in. It's, yep. sort of, it's not even necessarily form. Um, it's basically, I guess form is key if you're playing the exact same spot. Like if you're a ball-playing center back uh, or a, like a left center back who can slide over and be a left back like maybe that's where like the form in that role is important but for me it's more about like the individual things again I'm still trying to combine like what Berhalter is doing with what I was what, yeah. which is what I'm, I would be doing I'm more interested in your criteria yeah. than Berhalter's yeah, well, you, you know yours better than you know Berhalter's no, well no I guess <laughs> okay that's fine but I mean for me it, that's still the way I've answered this question yeah. is basically that I want to see if the indivi- like if there are individual moments where I can tell that this person is doing what I need them to be doing so say Tyler Adams is playing as a right midfielder for 
RB Leipzig, but we see him like moving centrally on occasion or like being able to turn and distribute wide under pressure. Like those moments, even if he's not starting every single game or having the best run of form, but we see him consistently doing a thing that we want him to then be able to do for the U.S. men's national team. When you can kind of use those little individual moments in a way that help the overall team be better, yeah. that's where I guess I'm, I'm, I'm more focused than, oh, he started every single game and played 75 minutes. Would you agree that players like, say, Christian Pulisic, mm-hmm. who you mentioned earlier, and Tyler Adams, they're almost so, they're such like stars of the mm-hmm. national team and so key to what, what we want to do and just you know, the best players, essentially, that they almost get a pass if they're suddenly not starting mm-hmm. or if maybe Adams has only just come back from injury, whatever, he's probably going to get called up anyway as opposed to like a sergeant or a weigher mm-hmm. or someone who's a bit more fringy and younger. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. they, those players are just elevated already, yeah. above, almost above the criteria because they're just, he's Tyler Adams, let's get him in the team. I mean, yes, I, I, I would say with the exception of my third like kind of general criteria, which is fitness. Just yes, that yes. If, if, they're, if there's an injury, if they're carrying an injury, I don't like the idea of bringing somebody in to maybe play 15 minutes each game game but you keep them kind of involved in the team that's where I think it's not nepotism but it is sort of over familiarity breeding over familiarity that now like well yes like like Paul Ariola as an example like uh, maybe he can't start the games maybe he can only play 15 minutes he's carrying in this hypothetical situation like a hamstring injury but we want to get him in to kind of keep him within the team keep him familiar with everybody then suddenly you are kind of taking a spot that somebody else who's fitter and maybe has found form could be uh, occupying it and giving it to a player who has already been there. And honestly, one of the things to watch with Tyler Adams is that adductor slash groin yeah. injury. He's not playing for Red Bull in preseason because he's still struggling to come back. I saw a that. tweet about like the road, like the road to recovery starts today or returns today or something. Like I think he's maybe was training or was with the team today. I saw yeah. just a quick tweet from uh, RB Leipzig English. Okay, let's let's hope he's fit. I mean, September, right? We're yeah. talking. It's still a decent mm-hmm. enough distance away that that he could be in good shape. Do you have any more criteria before I sort of get into my ideas? No, go ahead. Um, are you sure. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm. I really I think of this as the the. The idea of guys like Sergeant and Weyer that Adam mentioned, and then guys like Sergino Dest, and essentially a lot of these like U20 players that we know are super talented, mm-hmm. like Alex Mendez, Ulysses Yanez, that we know have raw talent, but haven't quite proven themselves with regular, regular first team games. Mm-hmm. I'm interested in the idea of when do we finally call those guys up? To the, to the senior national team. Is the promise they've shown at U20 and like U19 club level enough if, if they're only just getting on the bench for, for their very famous club teams, but they're not actually starting? And I, my answer to that whole thing is to go back to your original answer, which is it should be on a case-by-case basis. Yeah. We shouldn't just set hard criteria and be like, mm-hmm. well, so Gino Dess is real talented and he's on the bench every week for Ajax, but he's not playing 90 minutes, so we can't call him up. It just seems stupid to set a fast rule. Right? I mean, I think it's, it's an easier way to exist in the world is to have like hard and fast rules and yeah. to know like this is my criteria, this is how I operate. But I think it's easier because it's easier. Once you have these kind of guidelines in place, it removes a lot of the kind of objective analysis yeah. or sort of like deep dive uh, video clip reviewing and everything like that because it's just like, oh no, well he has to play 70 minutes. Yeah. He hasn't been playing and, 70 minutes, so no. And it's almost like you could just put everybody in a spreadsheet mm-hmm. and like use sorting formulas and be like, oh, and there's my 23. Yeah. And that, that is not how life works. That's no. not how selecting your roster works. One extra complication I would add on top of this is... Can the, I, actually, sorry, do you mind if I jump in there? Yeah. Because I, I think we do hear that a lot. We get a lot of people saying, well, this guy's playing, you know, starting every single game for a Bundesliga 2 side, or he's starting every, every single game yeah. for a lower, like a lower tier Bundesliga team. And like or, they hit that criteria, therefore we should select them. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think that that removes a lot of, like the one that I always go to for whatever reason is like Javi Martinez for Spain in 2018. Javi Martinez is starting like most games for Bayern Munich, but doesn't make the Spain squad for the World Cup because he doesn't fit with what they're doing. They don't yeah. need a sort of sit deep holding midfielder destroyer. They need a Sergio Busquets type, like distributor of the ball, so they bring in Sergio Busquets. I'm not even sure they brought in anybody else to fill that spot, uh-huh. but they wouldn't just bring somebody in. It didn't in. actually work out for them. It did yeah. not, but <laughs> it, it, like, but not because they didn't bring Javi Martinez, yeah. I guess my point. And so you may have a person starting every single game in the Bundesliga, but they're playing a completely different style than what the United States is doing. So yeah. even if it's working there... For a crazy long ball team yeah. or something. Yeah. And, that's, and I guess that's where I, I struggle to divorce myself from what Greg Berhalter is doing, because I yeah. think there are people who would say... 
again, as an example, say Berhalter said, we don't want to cross the ball. We want everything played defeat on the floor no matter what. And you've got this striker who's like, I don't know, like one of the top five goal scorers in the Bundesliga, but they win everything in the air. They're big physical. They stand up top. They do not a lot of movement. Yeah, I mean, that's why he doesn't get called in. That's, you're right. I was, I wasn't thinking of him, but I was basically describing him, except in the (laughs) Eredivisie. But like, that's what I mean, I guess, is if he doesn't fit, even if he's sort of doing like a great job, we hear those people, we hear a lot of comments about like, why isn't he getting called in? He's scoring goals. He should be in there. But if he doesn't fit with what the team is trying to do, yeah. then you're basically bringing in square peg for round hole, which then— Just because he meets your spreadsheet sorting formula. Right? I mean, yeah, or yeah. because you've enjoyed what you've seen from him. But I guess the, the difference there is that it's not just like— I guess what I'm trying to get to is that people would say like, well, if he's a square peg, but he's a very successful square peg, then you should change the yeah. shape to be another <laughs> square peg. But then that requires all the other change, round holes to change be changed. The holes. Change yeah. all the holes. But then yeah. it requires all the other holes to be changed yeah, because yeah. now you're adjusting to one player. And well, I you think just change all the holes back. Yeah, yeah, see? That's what gets really complicated. Mm. Right? So the other complication I want to add to this before we wrap up is there may be a situation where someone like Sergino Dest is on the fringes of Ajax, yep. right? And maybe he's appeared on the game day roster or whatever for the Ered- in the Eredivisie. Maybe he's had five minutes here or there. And he's on the he's on the, um, the the precipice of a breakthrough. And therefore, if you use the formula of like, oh, well, that means he's really good, so therefore he should be in the senior team starting in September. But what if Sergino Dest and his coach talk to Greg Berhalter and they both say, hey, we want just a little extra time with Sergino to work on something over the international mm-hmm. break. And that means that after that, then that's going to propel him into the first team. We want to work with him on this thing, then we can get him in the first team after the international break. This is going to benefit his career long term. These conversations do happen, right, Uh, behind the scenes. It may be a case where everything looks like he should be called up, but it's actually more beneficial for him to stay stay behind with Ajax and work with the coaches for an extra week or so. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's actually better not to call him up. So what I'm saying is that every situation is way more complicated in that way. And that's where I I want to say like one of the things that I go to, which I I will say straight up right here, is wrong. Like I am wrong to think this. I am wrong to want this. But you mentioned Sergino Dest there. There have been lots of rumors. There have been lots of like newspaper reports in uh, in Dutch newspapers about how like maybe the Netherlands should should get uh, all all the time. (laughs) But like that maybe the Dutch squad should call him up. Maybe they should just make sure Sure, he's totally committed to the United States. Yeah, yeah. And I think with that, for me, because I get a little bit paranoid about these moments, I think, like, no, call him up, <laughs> I mean, get him. You've been burned. You've been burned before. I have. <laughs> so you may call him up, get him in there, make sure he knows that he's part of this team. Maybe make sure he's cap tied if it's an official competition. Yeah. But I know that that's wrong because every time we talk to a coach, every time we talk to a person like uh, with U.S. soccer who's involved in these types of decisions, it's always like, no, he can make that choice for himself. Yeah. And this is where I think my issue becomes... You trust him, right? Yeah. And if he says, I'm committed to the U.S., you don't have to make him prove it. You can say, all right, He's committed to the U.S. The issue I have, if I'm being totally honest, is that it's not that I don't trust him. It's that I feel like maybe the ball has been dropped previously by U.S. soccer on occasion. And that's where my fear is like, I'll trust you. But I, I'm trusting you to make sure that you're like calling him and say it is that example of like he's about to break through to the first team. We want to give him some time with Ajax. We don't want to disrupt his development. I, I, I want to believe that that phone call is coming through of like, look, you would be called in, but we don't want to mess up your rhythm. It's really important to us that you yes. get this like great opportunity at club level versus a, well, he knows we're interested in him and he's got some work to do. Uh, yeah. So, you know, once yeah. he proves it, I'm, like then suddenly I'm very nervous. But meantime, Sergino is like doing all the practice yes. stuff on the verge of the ice break, but he goes home from practice and just stares at his phone waiting for Bearhalter or Ernie Stewart to call him. And it just doesn't ring. If we see him like reading, reading a like, f- like freshening up your Dutch football vocabulary then I'm going to get nervous I'm going to get nervous US soccer don't let that I mean, happen I'd be nervous because you should know it by now <laughs> yeah I, mean, I, guess, I guess there's that yeah <laughs> if it's how to sing the Dutch national anthem Uh-oh. then yeah yes. then we should get nervous I don't like that at all I don't like that at all <laughs> alright I definitely feel like we've answered Adam's question I hope so um, we'll be answering more, we'll get back to answering listener questions now that you know Women's World Cup mm. Copa America Gold Cup um, is all over if you have a question for us please send it to totalsoccershow.com slash questions the link will be in the show notes you can click on it and you can ask us a question that is true before we get back to our conversation uh, with the Cooligans. Well, we should first mention today's conversations sponsor. Is a nice word for it. I was trying to figure out a way to not be <laughs> insulting. I went with conversations. Uh, we should mention that today's show is also sponsored by Hims, a Hello, new Hims. wellness brand for men. Uh, with age comes wisdom. That's definitely true for Daryl, less so for me. Uh, but getting older, but getting older can also be a downer in one area specifically. <laughs> That's good coffee. That's pretty good coffee. Forty percent of men by age forty struggle from mm-hmm. not being able to get and or maintain an erection. Why? 
Why do gentlemen turn to weird solutions or do nothing when they can turn instead to medicine and science? Medicine and science, generally the answer, unless you're starring in a bad sci-fi film, in which case, <laughs> you know, great assault there. I would also argue doing nothing is the weirdest solution. Mm-hmm. Yes. It never, ever works. Uh, yeah, pretty, pretty much <laughs> never. Pretty much never. <laughs> so the solution is... Forhims.com. It's a one-stop shop for hair loss, which we've mentioned before, skincare, we've mentioned before, and sexual wellness for men, which is what we are focusing on today. Because thanks to science, erectile dysfunction can be optional. I share Jesse Pinkman's assessment of science. Uh, HIMSS connects you with real licensed doctors and FDA-approved pharmaceutical products to treat erectile dysfunction. They provide well-known generic equivalents to name brand prescriptions to you know help the ones you combat we mean. ED. You know the ones we mm-hmm. mean. Um, yeah, these are, like Tyler said, prescription solutions. You don't have to worry about going to see the doctor uh, multiple times. You just answer a few questions about your medical history. You chat with the doctor for a confidential review. Uh, it's all done, all done online. Don't have to go, you don't have to go visit a doctor. You never have to sit in the same room as a doctor if you don't want to. You don't. And you never. <laughs> and as I've mentioned many times before, I think I said it even on the last show, uh, I, I don't love making phone calls. I don't love talking to people about sensitive information. So HIMSS allows you to not have to talk to the receptionist yep. and explain why you're calling because <laughs> that could be awkward. There's also one more piece of the copy that I just really want to read out because I that? think it's kind of well written. Uh-oh. Hims is erectile without the dysfunction. There we are. <laughs> uh, so if you would like to try Hims for a month today for just $5, you can. Uh, they'll get you started for just 5 bucks while supplies last. Prescription products are subject to doctor approval and require an online consultation with a physician who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. See the website for full details and for safety information. This could cost it you... It could. It could. It doesn't have to. Mm-mm. It could cost you hundreds if you went in person to the doctor's office or pharmacy. But if you go to forhimscom slash ed. That's F O R H I M S, correct spelling? Yep. Dot com slash total socket. D O T C O M. D O T C O M. You should know how to Actually, spell. I think you're not spelling out the, the dot, so <laughs> just the dot. You and should then know how C-O-M. to spell total socket by now, but it's mm-hmm. just the letters E D right on the end of it. For hymns.com uh, slash total socket E D. The link will be in the show notes. Instead of typing out, you can just click on it That's in lovely. the show notes. Well done. <laughs> so thank you to Hims for sponsoring today's episode. Uh, Daryl Grove, thank you for uh, enjoying this moment of relative quiet and tranquility yeah, yeah. in our office. Shall we rec- return to the chaos oh, yeah. of a living room with the Gooligans? Back to the B&B. Uh, at least one more, okay, uh, from Deadball Brothers, which is, I believe is the Snavely Brothers. Oh, boy. Yeah. That's, that's I think I know what this question is, and I'm really excited about it. Oh, we, we previewed this one, right? <laughs> if the U.S. men's national team was a pizza... <laughs> What pizza would it be, and why is it Hawaiian? <laughs> Alexis, over to you. I refuse to comment on Hawaiian pizza. I, I'll say it's, uh, it's, it's Detroit pizza. That's what I'm going to say. What's Detroit pizza? Detroit pizza is a Sicilian that's baked in a pan where the walls angle out, so the, the dough doesn't rise up. It actually hits the side, and the cheese moves, griddles on the side, and the fat will slide down, and it bakes in the cheese fat. Oh, he sort of fries the pizza in the cheese fat. What, and, and why the is the cheese fat? <laughs> That's what we're looking for. The reason <laughs> why is because it's starting to become extremely popular and it's on the way up. And it's oh, one of those okay. things. So An optimistic answer. Yeah, so it's, it's one of the those fat pizzas. It's sliding up, guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. It's what everybody's always. <laughs> It's what your mother used to whisper to you in your ears <laughs> right before you open your Christmas gifts. That should be, instead of one nation, one team, the fat is sliding up, guys. No, the point, Definitely U.S. soccer's new slogan. Regardless of what defines a Detroit pizza, the reason why I think it's Detroit is because in a few years it will be everywhere, and that's what I think is happening with the men's national team. In a few years, it'll be very successful, I believe. Wow. You yeah. believe that we so will. So you started from nothing, which is Detroit. But if you, <laughs> and now here you if are. If you were throwing a – we're taking a lot of shots at places that you, you've yeah. called home at one point. <laughs> yeah. You lived in Detroit? <laughs> yeah, well, just outside. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Can, I, can I tell the story yeah, about when I – Good Lebanese food, boy. Yeah, incredible. Can I tell the story about when I got you in trouble about Detroit? No. Okay, then I won't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait till the mics uh, are off. Please don't. Instead, I'll just ask this. So if it's – Detroit style is like the style that best represents. What's like the topping, though, that you would throw on there if you wanted to represent the U.S. men's national team? Uh, oh, actually, let's pineapple, do this. right? Can we flip it around? Can we yeah. say, we've, we've done what pizza represents the U.S. men's national team. What topping would you put on to best represent the U.S. women's national team? Oh, um, gold, right? <laughs> uh, Mike's hot honey. Because <laughs> that uh, them honey is spicy. <laughs> I can't, listeners. I just need you to know how happily Alexis was. He like sat back in the chair, arms crossed. Like I just nailed that one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, crush it, and I got my boy a plug. Not bad. <laughs> the correct answer is Ashton Harris's sunglasses. Yeah, right? you just you sprinkle go. those on top. She's a bitch. Gotta eat. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, we've done six so far. We've maybe got another three or four on this on this episode. Next up is Andrew Elgerton. Oh, by the way, Deadball Brothers, uh, go listen to that podcast. Oh, that's yeah. right. um, Andrew Elgerton asks, okay, Teddy, this might be one for you. If there was a Marvel Contest of Champions style soccer competition, who would you pick to be on your team? You will also have to assume they have powers like Marvel heroes. What is the Marvel Contest of Champions? It's almost like Marvel versus Capcom. Like one of those games. I'm looking at Lexus. I heard Christian here. I don't know. I don't know what. Yeah, that is. I'm lost. Oh, uh, like the Avengers versus whatever. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, uh, or if it, it, Marvel versus DC. Like, who who would you? It's really just asking who, uh, what superheroes would would you want on your team if you if there were soccer. Oh, team. oh, we already did a whole Marvel episode. We right? did. We yeah. did. So refresh my memory. What's the question? Um, who would you pick? Basically, which Marvel characters would you pick to be on your soccer team? Is how I'm going to phrase this. On my so- I mean, basically, it's like Spider Man. Spider Man's got the agility. He can yeah. like cover the field and then literally cover the field with the webbing. So uh-huh. like you know he can block the goal. I think that's one. Should we build it together, or do you just want it to be me? Oh, we, don't, we can't do a whole eleven, right? We'd be here all day. Yeah. yeah. Well, should we each pick a couple? Is oh yeah, saying? maybe three. So it's not just me pick. rambling, panic in a panic way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> three a piece. Yeah, I don't so, know. Um, I'm uh, drafting Spider Man. That's my first pick. I mean, I, 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 who uh, as a as a defender, Hulk, right? I mean, you got to have Hulk. I mean, he's absolutely all right. <laughs> definitely can get. He's a definitely box to box guy. You know, he can <laughs> win some headers. <laughs> oh, I would go uh, Black Panther up front. Let him take a bunch of hits, but then mm-hmm. he unleashes it on people. But you know what? The announcer's right? going to be like, Black Panther has all this pace and power, and I'm not, yeah, see, have, that's... I'm not a huge fan. Yeah, I don't yeah, know about that. that. It's Warren, Barton, Warren Barton is announcing this game. <laughs> <laughs> all those Wakandans are so fast. Yeah. You know, I don't want to hear that. I say the only, the only uh, I know like three characters of all this shit, but um, I think, oh, sorry. Um, I think uh, Juggernaut is your goalkeeper for some reason. Juggernaut? Oh, yeah. <laughs> or juggernaut. Whatever. So maybe I don't know. Uh, maybe it's so, so two and a half that I know. I think uh, that Marvel superhero, Juggalo. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Shaggy too dope is yeah. on my team. I would say Deadpool would be good at just getting in players' heads. That's oh, true. Sure. Right? He'd be chatting and chatting and He'd chatting. He'd be the Quincy oh, Ameriqua. Yeah. He, was, he could <laughs> take down Ajax as well. Here's my next question, though, which <laughs> I feel like I feel like there's right? somebody maybe... Somebody maybe is very annoyed by this. Are they MCU characters, though? Is Deadpool MCU? Yes. He is? Okay, I don't, I don't know MCU? if he... MCU? Marvel Cinematic Universe? Uh, it's kind oh, of okay. half-owned by Fox, right? Yeah. This is maybe not the time to get into this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you nerd. So now, yeah. I, now I understand why you initially asked me this question. Uh, <laughs> Based on what I've just said there. Any more nominations before we move on? Because I'm aware... Taylor we're just we're moved up the glasses on his face with the tape in the middle of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, go for it. Here we no, go. Uh-huh. Okay. Next up, oh no, Andrew J. Abernathy asks, what is the Total Soccer Show food opinion most likely to upset Alexis? All right, Alexis, we'll go to you. Do you know of any of our food opinions that you strongly disagree with? I don't, actually. I'm okay. trying to think if I've, uh, from our tour, if there's something that you guys have said that has upset me. I mean, there's quite a bit. But what about food? I don't recall anything. All right, I'm going to give you two weapons to go at me with. Okay. All right, vegetarian. Yeah. There's one. I can see I can see you coming I can't at me for that. blame you for that as much as I'd like to. All right. And I hate pickles. Pickles are a disgrace. I mean, you know, I mean, the acid is supposed to wash the fat off your tongue. I don't understand why you would hate pickles. It just tastes bad. Yeah. I mean, I think it's can I, can I just add that it's not even that he hates pickles. Like, he hates the things that could one day become pickles. Like, he won't mess with dill. He doesn't eat cucumbers on the off chance that they eventually become a pickle at some point. <laughs> He's he afraid they're, they're going to become pickles in his stomach. You don't yeah. know. Yeah. I have nothing if not consistent. Well, I think, I think pickling is uh, what saved society. So uh, you're wrong. Oh, oh, but I like pickled onions and pickled other things. Oh, so it's now we're just pickled. picking whatever pickles we like. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'll pick my pickles. I, <laughs> have I, you got any strong food opinions? I, I, I know. Actually, I have, I have the opposite. I have one that Alexis sort of like I thought better of, at, but one that I used to use and my wife would sort of gently poke me and be like, why do you use that so much? Was Italian seasoning. And Alexis is like, would be like, there's no such thing. That's it's, not a thing. It's not a real thing. No, it's not. So yeah, and, and it really was as soon as you brought that up, I was like, why am I using this? Like, <laughs> I, have, I have all of the spices that make this yeah. and I could use them individually if required. So yeah. I think I, I backed off that one, but that was the only one that I know like sort of annoyed Alexis. I think that might be it though. I'm not sure. I get, I'm probably, do you guys fold your slices? Yeah, of course. We do now. Okay, good. All right, good answer. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. no, no. That's Actually, here's, here's a better version because y- y- we've had some meals together. Oh, right? yeah. I, I think but I got you, one. You've had many more meals with Christian. So is there a Christian Polanco food opinion? Yeah. The do, one, he do you eats want a this burrito. to go for an hour and a half? <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a problem. He ate a burrito by unwrapping the foil, the whole thing, took it out of the foil, and then he, he held it the way you would hold like, no. um, like a log in your hand, and then he harmonica it. He went to the middle. Like corn on the cob style? Yes. 
What's a burrito? Explain yourself. We've, okay, we've had, explain yourself. we've had this conversation four thousand times. <laughs> burrito, burrito Gate was probably the first <laughs> part of our podcast that caught wind or fire with our fans. Yeah, people. Yeah, it was a it was apparently a divisive issue. Uh, but no, he claims that I <laughs> he claims that I harmonica this burrito, and I, I did not for one. But one hundred percent did. That's a solid argument. I did not. I for one, I did, I did not do also that. Also present exhibit A. Toast. Exhibit okay. A. I didn't. We are Washington D.C., so clearly fake news. I uh, yeah, yeah. That is that. That is a clear example. Of but. What I did do was I so I didn't uh, g- grow up with this the foil system of <laughs> of, of a burrito so of of like gently you uh, peel under, it off peeling, in layers peeling, you yeah. rip yeah of course because yeah, which makes sense yeah I'm to not a monster I everyone know, I know yeah <laughs> because the burritos I normally eat are not in a foil they are uh, they they're sort of like panini kind of pressed so the 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 burrito like the uh is is like hardened a little yeah. bit so you can easily pick it up and grab it so what he's talking about stuff. is you know what he's talking about is a wrap <laughs> you, there's no chicken caesar burritos okay <laughs> it's not a it's wrap. a wrap this kid's eating wraps this is a common thing <laughs> that's the title of the show <laughs> when you press you press uh, uh on the burrito and it hardens it so it doesn't fall apart like the burrito that I had. Uh, what was Chipotle. that? Chipotle. Okay. Yeah. Chipotle does not make a, a stable burrito. Okay. <laughs> yeah. and so your problem is with the logistical creation <laughs> of said burrito. That's, that's all it is. I, look, now I know this stupid foil the dude, system. The dude harmonica it, and then it started to fall apart, and he got up. He goes, I got to get a fork, and we walked away. I looked at a different table of people, and I go, I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I was annoyed with him having this issue was because – he, while we were recording uh, the podcast... I go to the bathroom and I come back and him and my wife are in the middle of a conversation she, about the burritos. She brings it up to me. Because <laughs> I told her when I got home, I'm like, I can't do this podcast <laughs> with this guy. He harmonica a burrito. He literally went Could to his wife. Yeah. He Unverify went, us. He went to his yeah. wife. He snitched. <laughs> he t- snitch, it's not even about snitching. I'm like, what are these two people? How do they connect on anything? This is a ridiculous <laughs> thing. To base a marriage on, yeah. right. they, on their hatred of other people's food choices. To, to, to be fair, I'm not going to lie here. If Daryl ate a burrito, corn of the cob style, I, I genuinely would go home and tell my wife. Like, you got to tell somebody. He, he ate it corn of the cob. And you she gotta would get be like, I, I need to know more. Why you did gotta he get do it off that? Your chest. Like, delete his phone was it, yeah. was it a chicken Caesar burrito? <laughs> if, that yeah. hap- if that happened, of course. Of course you would say something. But uh, I did not do that. He did. I, wouldn't, I would not have so made wait, that. Hold up. on. I'm, I'm still... <laughs> I th- we're gonna have to go long on this one because I'm, oh, I'm still giving confused. you 30 more seconds. Did, did this actually happen? Because this is the thing that we haven't actually settled upon. Is yes, he will go to the grave yes saying it no. didn't, and I would never. I the, the idea of harmonicaing a burrito would have never popped in my brain on its own because my brain understands right. I need a burrito. So this guarantee this happened in front of my face. No, did, so, you, did you get a tune out of it? At least? Did I get a what? A tune. tune. A tune out of it? A tune? A tune out of it. A tune it. out yeah, of it. When you harmonica the burrito. I heard tuna. I'm like, you got a burrito a tuna? tuna? Yeah. <laughs> tuna Caesar burrito. <laughs> All right. I have follow-up questions, Your Honor. Uh, Daryl's the judge now. Was it the first bite that was taken? Yes. No. No. See, this is key. No. This is key. This is key. I can, it was. Because I feel like I'm recreating the scenario here. I'm going to guess that it was like loose on the side. You went for like the securing bite Correct. to fix the looseness of the side of the burrito. I took off the foil and, you and it that. started falling apart. Okay, I understand. I, understand I will now. prove my point. It started to fall apart. He held it like a log. He couldn't have turned it on its, side, on, on its head to bite the top. It would have fallen apart. He bit it. The, the, the easiest place he could, which was to go straight to the face. Like eating the top of a hot dog. That's how he bit it. <laughs> and I stared him the whole time. I'm like, by the way, I got a bowl, okay? I was trying to be healthy. That's what I thought was healthy at the time. Uh, I got a bowl. And I'm sitting here it's going, like I should have got... eight pounds of rice. So I got yeah. a bowl, though. Yeah. <laughs> well, Cuban. You know, rice just melts off Cubans. I said to... There's, there's a third of a green pepper in here. It's I, totally healthy. At one point, I thought to myself, I should have gotten a burrito to show him how to eat it. You know? Like, that, that was my thought. Like, I shouldn't have gotten a bowl. I should have got a burrito to set an example. Have we talked about soccer like twice in here. Yeah. Andrew J. Abernathy, what have you done with this? I just want to say I will go to my grave swearing on my life and on everything I love. All right. He burrito. Well, we look forward I to mean, he, he harmonica. We look forward to part two of this case. <laughs> um, Jay Riddle, one more question. Jay Riddle asks, what was your favorite World Cup moment? Okay. Hello, Jay. We love Jay. Jay yeah. Great Shouts dude. to Jay. Uh, Atlanta United fan TV and unrelegated. Great dude. Um, Great arm tattoos. I, yes. Exactly. Uh, favorite World Cup moment? 
you know, okay, I'll be it's, honest. The World Cup final, Rose Lavelle scoring. I knew you would say that. That goal, uh, Rose Lavelle had, has done our show, and it, it, every time a, a, a soccer player does our show, I am genuinely more uh, interested in their career and their life, and I and I want and I wish them well. And uh, and Roosevelt, she's what twenty three years old. You could tell when she when she did our show, she was like kind of shy. She never really did media like that. She was doing like a whole media day, uh, doing all the shows around New York. And uh, I was like sort of proud of her for sort of like getting out of her show. She was we were like the first I think me- real media thing that she did. And uh, when she scored that goal, I absolutely serious. I was tearing up. I was so happy. It was such a great we, moment. We were jumping like. Were, Let's you and go. were you and I talking about this today or yesterday? That like Roosevelt was kind of soccer famous before, but yeah. she scored that because she scored that goal in the World Cup final. Now she's like crazy famous. Exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's so a whole I, different level. I think of that goal legitimately changes her life and the trajectory of her life. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, my favorite is uh, all of the uh, social media after the win. Oh, of course it is. After the World Cup win. I mean, that is perfect. Ashlyn Harris. Yeah, it was glorious. Right? The greatest. I mean, somebody compiled all of her Instagram stories. If that doesn't win uh, Best Film Oscar, then we're going to riot. Okay. <laughs> it was absolutely perfect. I love it. And uh, thank you, Megan Rapino uh, and Ashlyn Harris, for making all of that uh, after the win stuff amazing. So speaking of Rapino, mine is that celebration. The arms out celebration yeah, sure. and just everything it represented about sort of uh the things she stands for there's, there's some somehow she makes you communicate a lot by just opening her arms yeah. wide in that moment right you it's didn't said, love the tea drinking one <laughs> that wasn't yours no, I, I didn't yeah. hate it but like yeah. it didn't um that was that was more about like some historical stuff yeah she was maybe referencing rapino was about right now yeah that's yeah. pretty dope i also i want to jump in to say you may disagree with this but this is my memory of that is that you also sort of not that you didn't get it but you were sort of like, but why like is she drinking? Yeah, but you were like, but why is she like? Why would she be drinking tea? Like, I feel like you were you, like the stereotype of it, the English drinking tea was not like right in your head at the moment. So yeah, you were yeah. sort of like, does she like tea? I don't like. You were sort of confused <laughs> by it. you didn't quite because I remember being like, well, I think it's because the English papers made fun of her. Yeah, and then I, you're like, oh, I don't yeah, remember okay. this conversation. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that happened because you were like, what? This like, is my Darryl. harmonica burrito. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. Did not That's happen. Daryl, <laughs> Daryl sees it. He's like, yeah, you know, I would love a cup of tea. Like he didn't get offended by. It. He's like, yeah, you're right. Tea I think she's great. offering me one. I think yeah, she's gonna make yeah. me one. <laughs> You know what? <laughs> Tetley must be sponsoring her because that was. <laughs> oh, I've I have a couple, so I'm just gonna do them all okay, real quick. Yeah. Uh, I Jane, I know it's like commercially, but I'm fine with it. The Nike commercial that like started the World Cup for yeah, me, no, which was like oh, yeah, yeah. with like the "Are you ready?" thing. Nika Martin. Yeah, that like Alaska. that legitimately made me. T- I teared up a lot in this World Cup. Uh, <laughs> that made me tear because that, but that like set the stage. The Amandine Henri goal uh, in their opener when she like cuts across and scores the rocket and yeah. like, runs across and there's like roar in the background and the crowd goes crazy. That was a very like oh like this is legit like this is gonna be awesome. This is gonna be a great tournament. Uh-huh. That was awesome. The Rapino second penalty that she took against was it France when she took two pens or was that against Spain? I think Spain. It was Spain. Yeah. The second penalty when she did the exact same thing she did for the first one that was just like the gutsiest decision ever. I love that. And Am the I fourth France one, France said that. I'm confused. I think she was, scored a lot of goals. She scored six goals. Yeah. Then, so, yeah. And then my final one to go with Alexis. I tweeted about this that like those Ashlyn Harris videos are the things like I equate this women's world cup team like in terms of like favorite teams in my head like they'll be the 2002 men's team for me like i have such fond memories of that 2002 u.s team and like the moment like Lennon donovan realizing he scored and like put his hands on his head and just like those individual moments that i always go back to of like if you ask me who's my favorite men's team ever that would be the one for the u.s yeah this would be my one for the u.s women and because it's because of stuff like ashlyn harris just like on a yacht drunk wandering around like it was <laughs> it's like that element of it combined with how good they were it's just this very likable fun but like weird team who win and don't care but are awesome and kind of yeah, yeah. care and don't care about talk like being outspoken it's kind of everything you want in a charismatic just the fun confidence team. right yeah it, you, see that also, confidence? you can't help but bond with them you just can't yeah help exactly it. Yeah. there you go so yeah th- those are all the u.s answers but obviously the correct answer is lucy bronze's goal from the top of the area for england right we're all agreed on that yeah no excellent totally crickets, <laughs> crickets. all right i so love it when we... ashton harris said i hate england yeah <laughs> that was my favorite idea yeah, story very, very nuanced <laughs> joke she put out there. <laughs> she was dead sober when she said that <laughs> let's get that english bread yeah <laughs> that's what she said <laughs> the flavorless english bread um all right so i think i've asked like 10 or so questions that'll be the end of part one on the total sock show for part two you've got to go subscribe to the Cooligans. find them on itunes Spotify, all the other ones. You, Everywhere. You, They'll you be have there. to. You listen to Daryl Grove. He knows what he's talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, go How to, dare go you subs- defy Daryl? <laughs> go subscribe <laughs> and you'll hear part two with about 10 more questions. Don't corner the copy of burritos. <laughs>